Hey everyone, welcome to Greybeard's Jewels. Today we bring you part two of our five part series of haunts and legends from every state. The Iolani Palace was once home of Hawaii's royalty, but today it operates as a museum. It seems though that some of the royal residents have decided to stay, even after death. Many guests say they've heard unexplained music and chanting in one of the rooms and Queen Liliuo Kalani seems to be especially active. The door to her room unlocks itself, her cigar smoke is smelled, and she's been seen peering out the windows. Hawaii also brings us the legend of the night marchers. These vigilant entities are the spirits of ancient Hawaiian warriors who roam the islands, protecting them from threats from the outside world. It's said you may hear chanting or even glimpse ghostly torchlight approaching or even catch the sight of a steadfast warrior. But if you do, the only way to protect yourself, unless you share a bloodline with these spectral guards, is to lay face down on the ground and never make eye contact. If you do, you're a goner. The old Idaho penitentiary housed some of the most notorious criminals around for over a hundred years. But today it operates as a museum. As with many prisons, former inmates haunt the cells they once occupied in life. Throughout the prison, all sorts of noises are heard, from phantom conversations to the sound of footsteps. Near the execution chamber, some visitors have become overtaken by feelings of dread and sadness, sometimes to the point of becoming physically ill. The Lewiston Civic Theater started life as a Methodist church in 1904, but in 1972 it became a theater. One night in 1982, two women and one man disappeared from there, and eventually the bodies of both women were found in another location. Having been the victim of murder, as for the man, he's never been found, alive or dead. Several different spirits, perhaps even these three, haunt the theater and have been spotted in various locations throughout. The whole house once operated as a settlement house for newly arrived European immigrants and has a long history of hauntings. The front bedroom is said to be haunted by a harmless spirit known as the woman in white, but on the other hand there are also rumors of a demon child having been locked away in the attic. That one can remain a mystery for me. McPeak Mansion was built in 1869 and haunted happenings started decades later. For a time the home served as a boarding house and several tenants claimed hearing the phantom sounds of children playing and laughing. The house sat empty and deteriorating many years and gained quite the spooky reputation. Today there are new owners and the hauntings continue. The spirit of an early owner has been seen, objects disappear, and phantom footsteps heard. Before we go any further, just a quick reminder to like and subscribe and don't forget to turn on all notifications so you won't miss a thing. Thank you for supporting our channel. The Gothic Nicholson Rad House has some seriously scary stuff happening. Blood has been seen pouring from the ceilings by multiple witnesses, and phantom wailing and moaning have been heard, perhaps from ghosts of slaves who were burned to death while hiding underground during their flight to freedom on the Underground Railroad. Diana of the Dunes appears along the shores of Lake Michigan as a naked ghost. She has been spotted by numerous people and always vanishes into the water. Alice Gray is the woman behind the legend. She lived alone in a little shack by the lake and had been seen swimming naked at times by fishermen. She eventually married but soon disappeared and her husband became the number one suspect. The Velisica Axe Murder House is the site of a brutal unsolved murder of eight including a family of six and their two house guests in 1912. Current owners offer tours and overnight accommodations. Guests report hearing a phantom conversation, feeling an overwhelming sense of sadness, aggressive EVPs have been recorded, and an amateur ghost hunter even stabbed himself while investigating, but has no recollection of the event. Legend says the whistle from the 2 a.m. train that passes through town triggers the residual playing of the murders, and a mist can be seen moving from room to room, not for the faint of heart. Stull Cemetery, legendarily, contains one of seven gates of hell. Lucifer himself was rumored to be one of the few residents to inhabit this small town, and many have claimed come spring equinox and Halloween, he makes an appearance in the town cemetery. 
Legend was, the gateway was located in a roofless church, and today only the foundation is still standing. Some say that witchcraft was practiced here, and allegedly numerous witches that were hung here is what has drawn evil. Another legendary cause for Satan's appearance in the cemetery is to visit the grave of his very own child. Be advised, they have stepped up police presence during these times of the year, and you'll likely get chased away before you can catch a glimpse of the devil or his gateway to hell. The Brennan House now operates as a nonprofit in Louisville, and is said to be haunted by several members of the Brennan family. There have been many sightings and even some photographs of their spirits, and according to witness accounts, two daughters still play a violin and a piano, and a son's cigar can be smelled from time to time. Iroquois Park in Louisville is a beautiful park with miles of twisting trails for everyone to enjoy. But according to legend, things go a little sideways when a thick fog rolls in, blanketing the trails. In the 1800s, a settler couple lived here, and while the husband was away, allegedly Indians attacked, first killing the dog, then the wife, and burning down their cabin. It's said once the fog appears, the air will be filled with the smell of smoke, but once the fog moves on, that's when the spooky stuff happens. The bloody spirit of the murdered woman is seen walking, carrying her severed head. The LaLaurie Mansion in New Orleans was home to Madame Delphine LaLaurie, the cruel mistress of the haunted house. By her third marriage, she had gone mad and abused, starved, and tortured her slaves. One who had been chained to the stove set the house ablaze to draw attention to their plight. Moaning, wailing, poltergeist activity has been rampant here since the 1800s. Comte de Saint Germain was said to be a society snob in life, but now is a vampire who enjoys luring young women to him so he can drink their blood. There is debate as to his age, whether from the 1700s or since the time of Christ. Regardless, he's been dead for centuries, yet has been lurking the streets of New Orleans for over a century and has been blamed for many missing people and murders. The Wood Island House is just one of many lighthouses that dot Maine's coast, and legend holds it is quite haunted. There have been a slew of paranormal occurrences witnessed here, like the result of a murder-suicide that occurred on the island. A fisherman and a drifter named Howard Hobbs had been drinking and ended up murdering his landlord, Fred Milliken, back in 1896. Initially, he fled, but ended up turning his rifle on himself later. Many believed Hobbes to be the culprit for the haunted happenings, which include disembodied voices and eerie moaning, glimpses of odd shadows, and things moving on their own. The home of Dr. Samuel Mudd is said to be haunted, perhaps even by John Wilkes Booth. You see, Booth traveled to Mudd's home after he assassinated Lincoln to have his broken leg mended. Dr. Mudd did so, and harbor both Booth and friend for half a day to rest. Today, his home is a museum and guests report feeling chills and having their clothes tugged on, and the bed where Booth rested often shows a body-shaped divot. The Goatman's laundry list of alleged crimes include eating dogs, killing teenagers, and screaming like a goat. No one really knows how he came to be, but the USDA let it be known they were not responsible. Legend tells of a goat farmer who had enough after a group of crazed teens killed his herd and transformed into the psychopathic hybrid creature. In closing, we hope you've enjoyed today's episode, and stay tuned for part 3 coming soon. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Greybeard's Jewels. And don't forget the podcast. Bye!